a woman and her daughter disappear. It was as if they were just blocked from the house. When people are missing like that, you know something dreadful has happened. Our leads very quickly went dry. With nothing to go on, police must bring in outside help. I see a trauma to their head, a piercing trauma. Piercing. There was a betrayal. betrayal. If we don't catch this man, he will strike again. Strike again. Where's your emergency? Pu Ling, a recent Taiwanese immigrant, has just gotten home from his job as an orange grove inspector. When he returned home, he had found that his um, wife and uh, daughter were missing from the house. Officers responded to the scene and uh, took an initial uh, missing persons report. Ling tells investigators that it's unusual for his wife and 17-year-old daughter to leave home for long periods of time. The Ling house is in a very isolated area of the county. It's actually in an orange grove. According to The Sun, neither his mother nor sister was there when he got home from school that afternoon at 4 p.m. About 4 o'clock. The officers initially did a you know, scan of the area and a search looked around the crime scene and found all the personal belongings to the mother and the daughter. Her vacuum cleaner was still in the middle of the floor as if she was um, you know, vacuuming, and then all of a sudden she was plucked from the house. It's an ominous scene. When the wife and the daughter still did not return by the next morning, it brought more concern to the husband and also to us in law enforcement. A forensics team returns to the scene. We followed up the next day in the daylight uh, with the further search. They weren't real sure what they were, but there were some, some marks in the driveway. When the officers arrived inside the house, her book bag was there, her coat from school, uh, the mother's uh, purse, uh, passport, ID, personal belongings were all at the house. We took uh, fingerprints uh, inside the house, the, the doors, uh, you know, leading into the house, um, the windows, all the entry points that you could possibly get in and out of the house. The fingerprints were all negative. They all come back to the occupants of the house. We felt we should do a search uh, of the surrounding area immediately. Officers scour the desolate farmland around the Ling's home. We walk through this, uh, this area all the way back to the canal, calling out and search the uh, uh, entire grove. But there's no sign of the missing women anywhere. 24 hours after the women disappeared, detectives aren't any closer to finding them. We felt that definitely this was a, uh, a case of not someone just running away from home. This was a case where these people were abducted. We distributed uh, photographs and descriptions and you know, facts about the case through the local media, TV, statewide. As investigators wait for any leads, they have to rule out foul play closer to home. I think it was pretty well established early on that the father uh, was at work at the time that they went missing in, so he was fairly well eliminated early on. Next, investigators take a closer look at the son, Su Tao. When the son arrived home, it was uh, 4 p.m., but he did not call his father till almost 9 p.m. His reaction to his mother and sister's disappearance raises suspicion. And as police find out, Su Tao is a troubled adolescent. We discovered from uh, talking to some of the people at the school that he attended that there um, was some uh, behavioral issues in, in the classroom. Was there issues involved with the son emotionally, internally, uh, that were, were coming out? Detectives asked Mr. Ling and his son to take a lie detector test. The polygraph investigations did not turn up anything out of the ordinary and verify the facts that they submitted. As leads run dry, detectives consider if the Lings might have had a dark past before coming to the U.S.
We had contacted uh, Interpol and made inquiries over into Taiwan about the uh, background of the family, husband, uh, wife, and also the children. But investigators are unable to turn up a single lead. The background information really led us to um, uh, you know, a brick wall at that time. Days pass without any movement in the case, and the clock is ticking. Detectives start to fear the worst. It gets frustrating because uh, you, you take it home from work with you. You think about it at uh, 10 o'clock at night, laying in bed, of uh, trying to think of something else that you can possibly do to, to, to get a lead in the case and, and develop something. Thanks. Then, Detective Redstone comes up with an unusual avenue of investigation. I was trying to think out of the box. I thought well, a psychic might be an additional tool that we could use on the investigation that might give us a break that we were looking for. He contacts psychic Phil Jordan. Mr. Jordan had been successful in, in other parts of the country and helping the police in some of their cases. We were very open to anything at that point. With nothing to lose, detectives send the psychic some pictures of the missing mother and daughter and ask for his help with the case. If I'm working a police case, I have a series of questions I will ask myself, like, are they alive or are they dead? Who was around them when they were last seen? A pickup truck type vehicle. I see the two women leaving their home willingly. Can detectives decipher these psychic clues to find the missing women? Weeks after two women went missing from their Vero Beach home, detectives have just gotten their first lead from psychic Phil Jordan. I see the two women leaving their home with a man. They went away in a, in a, a vehicle with this person, a pickup truck type vehicle. In the conversation with Phil, he had told us that he thought that the women uh, left the house willingly. And that's what we've seen from the uh, facts at the crime scene. There was no type of disturbance, uh, no uh, signs of any kind of a struggle. Also, uh, Phil told us that uh, the perpetrator drove some type of a uh, small compact pickup truck. But the notion of them leaving the house voluntarily isn't making sense. We sat down you know, day after day and, and took these facts that Phil gave us and, you know, how would this fit together? Why would they leave their house willingly with someone? It, it gets to a point where there can almost be no good answer, but you, you still got to look for an answer. Desperate for more clues, investigators turn once again to Phil Jordan. They ask him to come to Florida and continue his investigation. Really hoping he might be able to help us out with something. Can I look at the pictures again? Sure. Okay. Jordan tries to connect to the missing mother and daughter. Green uniform. Military. A military uniform. uniform. Why would they willingly go with this man and this man? They were taken into that pickup truck, and it feels to me as though. They felt it was somebody that may have had authority over them. Okay. Thirty-five between the ages of thirty-one and thirty-five. Thirty-five. Dark mustache, dark hair. A four-letter name. It'll be a four-letter name. Sometimes I can see names, but I don't see a name here. But I sense that there will be. Uh, four letters is just a, a feeling that I have. Would it um, also help if we were able to go to the Ling's house? Would that help you at all? Yeah, I think it would because I can sort of tune in a little bit closer to uh, the actual events that may have taken place. Well, we'll swear it out there now. All righty. Detective Redstone brings Phil to the Ling house to try to focus in on the killer. Phil, do you have any thoughts or any feelings in this particular room? Trauma to their head, a piercing trauma, a wound to the head, to the head. <laughs> the mother executed first. 
<laughs> the daughter, daughter, executed sex <laughs> I think the mother and daughter left thinking they were going one place and suddenly the mother realized there was a betrayal and they ended up going another place. And I think that's where they were executed. I think they're dead. I think they died of gunshot wounds to the head. They returned to the station to pursue the psychic's clues. At that point, we had a lot of information that we now had to try to um, piece together. Then, Phil is struck by a powerful new vision. Medical, medical, medical killer, 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 killer. Medical, medical, medical. Why is that significant? That significant. I also see, it's a little vague right now, but I also see something to do with a medical facility. Uh, something happening around a medical facility that may have something to do with this case. Redstone checks to see if either of the Lings had been ill or visited a hospital recently, but the clue seems to lead nowhere. Then, an alarming break in the case. The Sheriff's Department gets an emergency call from a Vero Beach Medical Center. A 23-year-old woman has just had a terrifying encounter in the parking lot. She was at a uh, clinic uh, at a doctor visit. Uh, was leaving the doctor's office and walking out in the parking lot, and she observed a man uh, hiding in the back seat of her car. And it just so happened a deputy sheriff was coming out of the medical clinic also about that time. Acting quickly, the deputy is able to apprehend the man. His name is David Gore. The medical, the medical, the medical facility. facility. Four letter name. name. Dark mustache, dark hair, hair. hair. Gore matches Phil Jordan's description exactly. Now can the psychic lead detectives to the missing women? Police have arrested David Gore for attempted assault in Vero Beach. Now investigators try to connect him to the missing Ling women. Upon his arrest, the police found in the back seat a uh, police scanner. Uh, they found a uh, handgun. Uh, handcuffs and also a police identification. Detectives discover that 31-year-old Gore works as an auxiliary sheriff's deputy and wears a green uniform. I see the two women leaving their home willingly with a man. A four-letter name, green uniform, the military, the military uniform. Just as the psychic predicted. Certainly one of the things that stuck out in our mind was the four-letter name that Phil Jordan gave us for being a possible uh, perpetrator. And we looked at Gore having a police badge, handcuffs, police scanner, and a gun. Redstone begins to understand how the Ling women may have been abducted. The women would willingly leave with a figure of authority if they thought that David Gore was a police officer and there was some reason for them to go with him. Police have nothing other than Jordan's vision linking Gore to the Lings, but they're able to buy time as Gore is convicted for the attempted abduction. While he was in prison, we, we continued to look at him as a suspect in the Ling case. But before police can connect him to the missing women, Gore is released on probation. After uh, David Gore was um, paroled back to our community, we continued uh, the surveillance on his house for several months, but it was going nowhere. And it was getting to the point I was really frustrated. Determined to keep this case from going cold, investigators turned to psychic Phil Jordan one last time. I see two men, two men. The second person, I'm suddenly taken to their land area of Florida. Paint is sell oil of the body shop where they redo cars. Phil senses that Gore may have a partner in crime. Sergeant Redstone. Yeah, detective. There's got to be a strong connection to the Orlando area. And I also feel with that there's something mechanical, like a, like an auto body shop. And I definitely think there's two men involved. Instead of hitting a brick wall, we had somewhere to go and, and something to do as far as investigation, which really gave uh, uh, myself and Captain Tippins, I think, really an uplift at that time. 
Investigators contact law enforcement in Orlando, some 100 miles away. But just as the search for a second suspect begins, there's a shocking new development close to home. We had received a phone call from someone who observed a uh, lady running down a driveway being chased by a man. He shot her and started dragging her back to the house. Following up on the call takes police right back to a familiar address, David Gore's house. My worst fears had, had come to fruition after uh, hearing uh, the location of the incident. Officers quickly surround the house, but Gore refuses to come out. We knew he was armed. Uh, he was noted to have quite a few firearms. As we were surrounding the house, we took up a position behind a vehicle that was located in front of the house. We uh, were crouched behind the vehicle. We observed some blood on the car. And that's when we found um, the young lady that had been shot. We checked, and uh, she was deceased. Police immediately stormed the house. We were able to find David Gore uh, hiding in the house. Uh, we also found a uh, young lady there that was tied up and, and gagged. And at that point, he gave himself up. There's still no sign of the Ling women, but police remain convinced that the man responsible for their disappearance is now in custody. After Gore was caught red-handed, we started looking into all the other cases that we uh, had unsolved. We were looking at the Ling case, two girls, hitchhikers, and another uh, lady who had been missing from the beach. Authorities begin to suspect that they may have a serial killer on their hands. And as they're about to find out, David Gore has a deadly partner on the loose. Police have arrested suspected serial killer David Gore for murder while rescuing a second woman from the same fate. And they soon discover that Gore did not act alone. The girl who survived told us that there was someone else with David Gore. He had gone home and was going to come back. She was able to tell us that there was two abductors and was able to identify his cousin, Freddie Waterfield. And when investigators check into Waterfield's background, they're blown away. Freddie Waterfield had lived in Orlando and owned an auto body shop. Paint the smell of oil from the body shop. The body shop. Body shop. Body shop. And we looked at uh, you know, Fred Waterfield with uh, the facts surrounding him and the connection to Phil Jordan was able to piece that together as part of our investigation. After Waterfield is arrested, Gore decides he's ready to talk. He confesses to kidnapping and murdering the Lings. David Gore had stalked uh, the 17-year-old daughter for several weeks. Uh, he was in the area. Uh, because of his Grove maintenance business and observed the girl getting off the school bus and walking about a quarter of a mile to her house. He gave us the, the details of the crime and how he kidnapped the women from the house using his uh, police authority. After uh, Gore had abducted the Ling mother and daughter and taken them to his trailer at the Grove, he called Fred Waterfield, his cousin in Orlando, and asked him to come down, told him, you know, he had gotten a couple of girls. The women were then uh, murdered and uh, placed in 30-gallon uh, barrels and buried in the Orange Grove areas west of town. Gore agrees to show investigators where the Ling's grave is. The bodies are unearthed and sent to the morgue. Phil Jordan again told us at the beginning of the investigation that he felt that the mother and the daughter were both shot once in the head. And this was verified during the autopsy. After three long years, the mystery of the Ling's disappearance has finally come to an end, and their killers are brought to justice. David Gore was uh, subsequently uh, convicted and sentenced to death. Fred Waterfield was convicted and sentenced to uh, life in prison. Authorities also find Gore and Waterfield responsible for the murders of several other women in the area. I, I got some pleasure out of convicting Mr. Gore because he was a bad, bad man. 
And if he hadn't been convicted, there'd be some other bodies we'd be digging up somewhere. In hindsight, investigators are stunned to realize just how accurate the psychic had been all along. Quite a bit of the information is, is very good information if you only knew what it was at the time you got it. A lot of the clues that he gave us, we were able to weave in with the facts that we were able to develop and to really give us the feeling that we really had the right person based on uh, physical evidence we had. Thanks to Phil Jordan's insights, a case that seemed destined to go cold was solved. I feel that uh, the clues that Phil gave us helped us put these guys away and they certainly opened my eyes to using psychics in the future. <laughs>